So I want to ask you all to do a little bit of time traveling with me this afternoon. Let's go back to 2009. Think about where you were and what you were doing. And I remember a few things that were happening during that year as well. For one, Cash for Clunkers was going on. The iPhone 3GS was the newest technology. And we had just developed satellite navigation for our cell phones. We had had a new president for about eight months. But more importantly to us, at least at the time, it was our freshman year of high school. Exactly. So the reason for listing all of these things is to prove a point that change can happen over time. And the fact is that our, with our current level of innovation, things are changing more quickly and rapidly than they ever have before, especially with regards to education. Now what we learn is changing. Tanner, Will, and I will all be starting college next fall. Now try to wrap your head around this fact. By the time we're in our third year of college, half of what we learned in the first year will be outdated, yet we'll still be expected to learn of these changes and to know the new information. So while what we learn changes, how we learn changes as well. The Coursera movement, which was introduced in 2011, is an online database where students can take over 200 courses in any subject they choose from prestigious universities like Brown and Columbia. And Will actually has a personal experience with this program. Yeah, sure. I had the experience to be enrolled in a modern poetry class from the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, one of my more prestigious classmates was the center from Illinois, Dick Durbin. So. Yeah. so that's a really cool opportunity, but what does it mean for us? It means that a student sitting at home on their laptop computer taking courses for free can get the same education as a student paying $50,000 a year to get an Ivy League education. Now this seems a little bit unfair because there is a discrepancy there. But it means that we just have to challenge ourselves further. We have to rework the resume, if you will. We have to learn to become something other than what our degree or our certificate allows us to be. We have to become based on what we do, how we do things, and what we make of that. Now, regardless of an excessive amount of worldly change or, um, you know, I've experienced this town becoming what it is through a great deal of continuity. Um, being in a town of so many transplants from many number of, uh, you know, big corporations, I like to think of myself as a bit of an anomaly and this meaning that I've spent the entirety of my 18 years in the city of Bentonville. Now, um, in a way, this town has grown up alongside of me. My parents have experienced the same sort of change, my dad having lived here since 1982, and my mom being a native of Pea Ridge, Arkansas. As Courtney referenced earlier, you know, we're all high school seniors, but just as the world has taken a multitude of paths to get to the point where it is today, so have we. There is a standard of education in Bentonville, uh, and this meaning that at some point or another, we're all going to take generally the same courses. Uh, like we all had sophomore English together. And we've all taken essentially the same history classes. Right. Um, and so this, uh, the idea is that education has now changed. It's no longer about sitting in a classroom, listening to a teacher or a professor ramble on and on about information that is readily available in a multitude of locations. Rather, it is involvement that triggers our education. In this regard, the, my high school debate class has been my opportunity to become involved. I joined two years ago as a sophomore in high school and entered a class that was heavily divided where help was hard to come by and friends were oftentimes hard to make. It was not an environment that was especially open to incoming students full of questions and not really knowing anything at all. The problem here is that you need to create an environment where everyone is able to learn at the same time and is able to grow and change as others. Last year, my first, uh, first year as a varsity uh, debater, we had more incoming debaters than we've ever had before. And in order to create that environment where everyone was learning and performing at their peak capacity, we had to make a few changes. And the first thing that we did, uh, we held our own form of a debate institute, BHSDI, as we called it. And what we did is we had all of the incoming students come in a week before school, and we had them go through a week of lectures hosted by uh, those of us who were more, more experienced. We worked with them in small groups and eventually had um, our own sort of tournament. Now, these two joined debate for the first time last year. And guys, was this in any way beneficial towards you? Extremely. 
Yeah, and a trend we noticed was that the people who were in that room the first week were people who were doing consistently better at tournaments throughout the rest of the year. And I would have to agree with that. Now, what we did here did a couple of things. And the first thing is it allowed us to familiarize ourselves with the new students. And this is especially important because we have two different classes of debate. And if you don't know those other students in the classes, you're going to be spending a lot of time with them. And it makes that environment more difficult. And another thing that it did is it allowed us to make a family atmosphere an integral part of who we were. In debate, we spend a lot of time together. We literally spend every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday together during the school year, as well as extended tournament weekends once a month. Um, and if we don't become a family, you know, that makes for an environment that's hard to be in. Yeah, for example, it would have been hard to deal with these two three days a week if I didn't learn to love them. Exactly. <laughs> now, the human experience is a pretty incredible phenomenon. We're presented with situations every single day um, to grow and change as individuals. And grasping those opportunities is essential if we really want to become anything at all. And in this regard, the high school debate class has been my opportunity to find what it is I want to do with my life and the individual that I will become. In becoming the individual that I am, I've taken a drastically different course than Tanner. Uh, there's an expression, it takes a village to raise a child. If that's true, I'm pretty messed up because it's taken more than a couple to get me where I am today. <laughs> um, this, of course, meaning that I lived in South America, I lived in New York, I was born in Florida, but never lived there and finally landed here in Bentonville, Arkansas. And um, my, if we're gonna go back three years ago, my first day of high school was also my first day in Arkansas. And it was a pretty tough experience. Um, I'm gonna open this up to Tanner and Courtney, but my first day of high school at BHS, just be brutally honest, what were your first impressions? I can take it. You were a little weird. <laughs> sure? Definitely off the wall. Exactly, um, but you guys, would you say that by the time we were seniors, I would be president of the class or leading the student section at football games. Do you guys? No. Definitely not. Zero chance of that happening. That was not even anywhere near me on the radar. And that's sort of a testament to the transformative power of Bentonville High School and of high school in general. Um, something that has really shaped and molded me has been the Bentonville High School Choir Program, and specifically Bentonville High School Chamber Choir. If you're unfamiliar with Chamber Choir, we have sung at a lot of events locally. We sang at the opening of the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. Um, that was an amazing experience. We also got to tour internationally, uh, which was also awesome. Um, something that really makes that group unique and sets the tone for the rest of the year is our opening retreat. We take a day and we just go. And we learn music and we learn about each other. And it sets a framework for how the rest of the year is gonna go as far as communication and music is concerned. Yeah, and I have just recently entered the chamber choir, and at the retreat this past year, um, there was a time where all the guys in chamber choir went and played a game of basketball, and if you know anything about choir boys, we can't play basketball. <laughs> yeah, or any other sports for that matter. But the takeaway idea from that experience was that we were able to bond as a group and understand this is the dynamic that we need to have for the whole rest of the year. Another experience I've had similar to that was this summer. I had the opportunity to go to the United States Naval Academy for a week and spend a week there as a part of their summer seminar program. And that was a very amazing experience. Uh, very similar to Chamber Choir, we had an initial learning and training period. In Chamber Choir, it was musical and social, but at the Naval Academy, it was physical. We ran, we did push-ups, we did sit-ups, and got up and kept running. And that was a really great experience, and it set the tone for how the rest of that week was going to go. Throughout the course of the week, we took classes on engineering, physics, and history, and literature, and leadership. And it was a really cool opportunity to learn a lot in a relatively short period of time. But at the end of the week, we had sea trials, where we went and we spent the day running everywhere we went, stopping intermittently to bear crawl or carry your partner up and down a hill. And it was, it was really great. At the end of the day, we had a mile run through the woods. Before we did that, they took us down to a spot on the river where they told us we'd be carrying boats in and out of the water. And we would carry them over our heads. And so we had a big group of high school seniors, some of the smartest people that I know, and we were carrying boats in and out of the water. And it's a relatively useless skill. I mean, in case any of you are wondering, <laughs> you are not gonna be carrying a boat in and out of the water in your lifetime. But it taught us a lot. 
we learned what we needed to keep ourselves going when it would be easier and much more convenient to quit. I learned how to be a leader with my example and reach out to other people and keep them going and then they in turn would keep me going when it would be a lot easier to stop. And that right there is something that I can point to as the link between learning and experience, between information and, you know, no and knowledge of ourselves. That link between um, what we learn and how we learn it and the things that we really carry away, the lasting lessons that we hold on to. Uh, Pete Seeger said, uh, not, uh, education is what you get when you read the fine print, but experience is what you get when you don't. Now, our purpose for these little anecdotes here today are not to tell you that your education is largely irrelevant or your college degrees are totally worthless. <laughs> you know, we're not scientists in any sort of recognizable field, but we are all old enough to understand that we live in a world that changes every single morning that we wake up. And grasping the opportunities is essential to if we want to become anything. Because becoming is not a solo journey. You know, we don't find ourselves, most of the times, in moments of solitude. We don't begin to paint the picture of our lives without the help of supporting actors. And understanding the existence and the nature of our existence is really essential in that, and to do that, we must become involved. So I think we can all agree that we're certain of two things, the past and the present. But the future, well, we don't know about that. That's why the question we wanted to ask you today is not what have you done or what are you doing? We wanted to ask you, what can you do? Change is happening, so what are you doing to accommodate that change? We can just ignore it and pretend that it's not happening or we can embrace it and use that to better ourselves. If we go back to the idea of reworking the resume, becoming something other than what your college degree allows you to be, branching out from that label and becoming something more, then we can develop a society where learning isn't just reserved for the youngest generation. We chose a quote today that we thought summarized our ideas. The only thing standing between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. So with that, I'd like to ask you to imagine, who do you want to be? And then ask yourself, what can I do to become something more? Thank you. <laughs>